Um, and uh, and so I would like if Shahir, if you could go ahead and talk at the institutional level. Shahir Gindi is um, on the board of the Canadian Business Development Bank. And so we had a conversation a few weeks ago and, um, and it was very interesting and I actually invited him to speak um, to this issue of the institutional support and the lessons learned um, uh, even from other countries that they were studying while implementing this bank in Canada to support the SME ecosystem. So he only has a few slides and uh, Nadara is also uh, has just a few words um, to add to that from her experience um, supporting SMEs at the World ba the IFC, um, part arm of the World Bank. Um, and then Mona will speak to us about the importance of research um, and evaluation and we're going to sort of group all of this together so, th so that we're 20 minutes late instead of an hour late, okay? All right, thanks, Shaheen. Thanks very much, and I'm very happy to be here. So my t uh, the theme of my conversation will be on the more vulgar topic of money, because most of what you need to do and the terrific projects that we heard about today, whether they be NGO or for profit, need capital. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the capital's got to come from somewhere, uh, and that's how for the time being, that's how the world works and that's how we get scale on some of these uh, projects, whether they be social impact uh, or other social entrepreneurship, uh, social entrepreneurship initiatives. My, my day job uh, is in fact uh, aggregating capital for private equity funds, venture capital funds from Europe, the Middle East, US, Canada, and then having those fund managers invest those funds in projects just like the terrific projects we heard about today. Most of those are investments are for profit, but some of them are pure social impact or, or other, uh, you know, have motivations behind them other than, uh, other than profit. The other thing that segues into that is helping countries around the world develop the infrastructures they need to be able to aggregate capital. So for example, not so long ago, we worked with the uh, Saudi Arabian government in establishing uh, the rules or making recommendations on what uh, legal infrastructure they needed to be able to create venture capital, private equity funds, and to invest them. So when Mona speaks about institutional support, that's government support, it's bank support, uh, it's not just entrepreneur support, and it's not just sort of NGO or organ the support of organizations uh, such as this one. Uh, so in that context, beyond sort of legal reform and, and the actual deal making, uh, I wanted to speak for a few moments about the role of government and SFIs or state-owned uh, state financial institutions uh, in assisting entrepreneurs and SMEs in particular. So beyond my day job or my other day job as a member of the Board of Directors of the Business Development Bank of Canada, which is a bank established long ago to help SMEs in Canada. Uh, while I may have been unique at the time, there are now development banks around the world, uh, India, Singapore, Korea, Finland and many other places, I have a slide that, that talks about that. So the role of a development bank, support entrepreneurship, access, provide access to financial services for poor or geographically isolated individuals, facilitate or unlocking economic activity. Uh, typically, uh, the development bank will play a role that the private sector is not prepared to, to play. For example, higher risk projects. You can't go to a traditional commercial bank or lender and say, here, I have a venture that's just starting, lend to me. Help me finance my export. Help me finance uh, a certain kind of uh, research and development. You have no cash flow, you have no prototype, you, may not, you have no revenue even, and yet you might need some support to get going. So these are higher risk and lower profit unlike a more commercially minded uh, enterprise where it's higher risk, higher profit, these would be higher risk endeavors, higher cost to execute them, uh, and lower profit. Uh, different countries have taken different approaches. Uh, some countries have said, we don't want the development bank to compete with our private sector banks because that would be unfair. And others have said, it's okay, let's go ahead and compete with the private sector banks. And so different countries have taken different philosophies. In Canada, we play a complementary role. We do not want to compete with the private sector banks. We want to take projects that the private sector banks won't take. Again, they are higher risk. They are SME. They are assisting uh, geographically isolated, sectorally risk, more uh, businesses that are in sectors that are more risky than, uh, than the traditional banks are prepared to go into. 
products that a development bank, including can Egypt, can provide. I've done a little bit of research. I don't believe Egypt has uh, the development bank of the sort that I'm thinking about, uh, but these banks would provide commercial uh, senior lending, sub-debt venture capital. They can even play fund-to-funds activity, so invest in other venture capital funds, infrastructure lending, export development. There's a lot that a development bank can do to support uh, SMEs. So here's a slide that has some examples. Uh, Finland, Mexico, Russia, the Indian Bank has been quite successful, China. I'd love one day to be able to put up a slide there. there Egypt does have an export, it's called an export development bank, but it really is a private bank. It's uh, listed on the stock exchange. It's, it's, it's a traditional bank competing for the same uh, business and offering traditional products that any other uh, bank would provide. It's not uh, targeting uh, higher risk, lower profit SME kind of uh, initiatives. So development banks can get into trouble uh, when you mix the politicians with the bankers. Uh, so you need a clear mandate. You need independent governance. CEO, management team, and a board that's not uh, subordinate to government. They may be nominated by government, but after that they have mandates, four-year, five-year, ten-year mandates to run the bank uh, within the mandate that's been articulated for them. Transparency. People need to know, the public needs to know who's making the decisions and what decisions are being made. It should be profitable, and we'll talk about profitability targets. And whether it's funded by government or funded by the bond markets, that's a decision that each government can take for itself. Biggest challenges, and of course this would be a challenge in Egypt, uh, I presume, uh, would be political interference. Uh, so in leadership and governance, if, if the politicians are going to call the CEO and tell the CEO what deals the CEO should do and what deals the CEO should not do, that would be a recipe for failure. You should leave it to the experts. Uh, to divert resources outside of the mandate, so if you're telling the bank I set you up to do SME and then you put pressure on the bank to do export development or infrastructure development, uh, that would be a failure. Uh, to divert resources to pet projects in my constituency or to my friends or to my neighbors or to my family members, that would be a failure. So firewalls that would protect against political interference would be uh, an imperative. Volatile mandates, you can't have the mandate changing every year. Uh, like someone said, you need some continuity, you need to have long-term vision when you uh, launch this kind of an initiative. Uh, using uh, profitable products to subsidize less profitable ones while competing uh, with the private sector. You don't want to kill the private sector. You want to help the private sector. So you can't use this as a blunt instrument to, to kill competition. So initial steps in Egypt, for example, be what is the market failure? If we were to launch an initiative of this sort on a macro level, what are we trying to address? Is it SME financing? Is it, exp is it uh, export support? Is it creating a venture capital, a vibrant venture capital market? Should we be creating funds of funds? Israel, for example, uh, Canada, other countries have launched uh, nationally funded funds of funds programs. So they select winners who then themselves manage funds that they invest in venture capital funds. So the venture capital funds can invest in portfolio companies uh, in Egypt. So where's the market failure in Egypt? There needs to be some thought about that. Uh, and then the mandate can be uh, clearly articulated. You can favor a sector. It could be biotechnology, high technology, manufacturing, um, agriculture, whatever sector needs particular attention. The mandate should be in law so that people don't tamper with it. Uh, diversification of products would be good also. Don't put all your eggs in the venture capital basket or in the long-term debt basket so what, or, or in a certain industry or a certain geography. Uh, return on capital is very good so that the bank is self-sustaining and you can keep rework, uh, recycling the capital. And again, making the private sector your partner and not your enemy. So I put up a comparative slide here just to compare uh, four different uh, banks to give you an idea of who they, whether they compete, whether they're complementary. By efficiency, I mean what, what kind of return on uh, investment are you looking for. So in Canada, we're looking for something that gives back the long-term cost of capital. In, uh, in Spain, they're looking for a return that's similar to the commercial banks. Uh, in Mexico, they're looking for at least an ROE equal to 10% return. So this is something that should be considered. Measures of success, are you creating jobs? Are you creating companies? 
How many projects have you supported? You could measure tax revenue. It's not, and, and it's not about the bank making that much money. Someone said in analyzing one of the banks, well, this is a failure because the borrowers are repaying the money so quick because it's very expensive money. That's actually a sign of success. The, it, that means that the companies that you have financed have become profitable or have grown so quickly that they can take out your expensive debt and now move into the uh, and uh, move into the more mature commercial lending or commercial uh, banks and borrow borrow at, at you know at market rates. I, I, I also put up a bi bibliography of different resources if you wanted to learn more about uh, development banks. But I, I would summarize by saying that these are fabulous projects. They need capital. I think that uh, Rise Egypt or Generally, we need to think about ways to aggregate capital from the, the diaspora or within the region or within Egypt and to be able to deploy that capital. To do that, you need a, a legal system that is predictable, understandable. Uh, you need people to manage that capital, uh, to invest that capital, and to be accountable for that capital, whether it be in the private sector or via government. But for sure, there's a role that, uh, that I think can be played at the institutional level. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim.